Welcome. Welcome. I'm really glad uh, all of you have decided to take time out of your busy schedules to join us tonight. Um, my name is Hannah Ting and I am an admissions counselor at Wheaton College. Um, and I serve my territory of the Great Lakes region. Um, so Michigan, Ohio, Indiana, Wisconsin. And um, I was also a student at Wheaton myself. I graduated in 2020. Um, so of course, tonight is mostly focused on current students at Wheaton, but I can also um, later on also share from my own perspective as an alumna. And I'll turn it over to my colleague, Mary Kopp. Hi guys, this is Mary Kopp. I'm also an admissions counselor at Wheaton College. Um, I cover the Northeast Territory. So that's basically every state from Virginia up through Maine. Um, like Hannah, I'm also an alumni of Wheaton. So I graduated in 2019. Um, and like she said, I'm happy to contribute to the conversation as we go along, but excited to hear from our panelists tonight. So I think we might just go ahead and get started. We'll just dive right in. So I'm gonna go ahead and ask some prepared questions. And the first one is what kind of service and ministry opportunities were you seeking coming out of high school or pre Wheaton context? And as you were transitioning into Wheaton. Yeah, and maybe just to introduce first our four panelists for tonight, um, we have Elijah Owens, who can go ahead and start and then we'll just carry on with the rest of the three. Yeah, so hello, I'm Elijah Owens. I am currently a junior here at Wheaton. Um, I'm from Minneapolis, Minnesota, and I'm studying interpersonal communication with a minor in geology, um, not at all related um, to each other, but I love them both. Um, my ministry involvement currently is the Diaconoi program, which serves um, students who are visiting campus. Um, so we give tours and when when we have overnight visits, um, we are the group that actually hosts those overnight visits. Um, and would you like me to answer the question? I can answer the first question, perfect. Um, so when I was coming into college, I was not actually looking for any ministry opportunities. Um, that just wasn't quite on my mind, but somehow within not even the first two weeks of school, I ended up running with a friend for student government. Um, which at the time I didn't see it as a ministry opportunity. I really saw it as like a, oh, we're just going to have some time to um, make policy changes in, at Wheaton. But um, for me and my friend, the year really ended up being a year where we spent serving our classmates. Um, so we provided events where um, we would have worship and prayer, um, but also events that um, really helped us to rest well together because that was something that we noticed in our class. We saw that our class wasn't resting well. Um, so we wanted to provide spaces and um, minister to our class in the way that we saw that they needed. Hey guys, I'm Sophia. Um, I'm a senior this year at Wheaton and I am originally from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Um, and so I am a part of Abide Ministries, which is just at Wheaton, but it's something that I started with one of my friends and it's a women's ministry on campus and it's open to all women on campus. It's been really great. I was also a part of Ministry Trips Cabinet, um, which I got to do the travel coordinating for and then also got to go to Costa Rica on one of those trips um, and be involved there over last summer. Um, but I was also on Transfer Orientation Committee um, because I am a transfer and so to answer that first question, when I transferred in, I think I was kind of more looking um, to be ministered to rather to be a part of ministry and evangelism. And it was really cool how all of these opportunities just arise for me to be ministered to, but at the same time also minister um, through like SMP or student ministry partners, which is part of ministry trips and abide. Um, and so I think that that was just really cool and has been just a blessing for me while I've been at Wheaton. I can go next. Hey guys, my name is Lindsay. I'm also a senior this year and I'm from Columbia, South Carolina, um, majoring in math and minoring in history. Also have nothing to do with each other. And a few things I'm involved with on campus this year, I'm on the cabinet for Discipleship Ministries, which is Wheaton's, I believe, biggest um, student organization. We pretty much organize 
a lot of the small groups, the Bible studies on campus. And then I'm also in Cabinet for Honduras Project, which is a totally student-led organization um, that kind of funds and then visits Honduras to build um, sustainable water um, systems there that are gravity fed. And to answer your question, I think that something I was looking for coming into Wheaton in terms of um, ministry opportunities was actually just wanting to lead a small group, um, which is how I got involved in discipleship ministries. You can't really lead one your first year. You kind of poured into them and climbed the ladder from there. But I just knew I wanted to make my faith personal um, in a smaller group setting as well as a large group setting at Wheaton. Hi, my name is JY. I'm a part of the chaplain's office. I'm from South Korea. And particularly, I'm the chaplain of student chaplain of prayer. Uh, for me, funny story is I missed orientation my freshman year, and I actually missed of um, I didn't go to passage because my family and I were traveling down to Dallas. This might I'll keep this short, but and when we went to Dallas, um, we met my dad's mentor. My dad's mentor was this 90 year old man sitting on his rocking chair, and I had no idea where he was um, where he went to college. But when he asked me. All of a sudden, where are you going to go to college? I told him I'm going to go to Wheaton College, and I saw him get super excited. And he said, "Oh, I know that college. I went there 70 years ago. I was friends with Jamelli uh, Nate Saint, who are famous missionaries who were martyrs in our uh, from our school. And he told me one thing that I can't really forget. He told me, JY, when you go there, remember that you're not there because you wrote an application. You're not there because an admissions officer just chose you." You're there because you're commissioned there by God himself. And he told me, don't take Wheaton lightly. He told me that um, Wheaton truly is a school built on the blood of martyrs. And uh, when I heard that, I thought Wheaton was going to be this um, amazing school, like a school that was a city on a hill, the school that was on fire for Christ. And um, when I first came to Wheaton, I think the first thing I tried to look for was a prayer meeting. Um, but even though I looked, maybe I didn't look hard enough, I couldn't really find any prayer meetings. So... Um, I was praying and some of my friends and I decided to make our own prayer meeting and uh, for me specifically and for our friend group we prayed specifically that Wheaton uh, College would be revived. The revival of Wheaton College is something that we've been praying for constantly. So uh, coming into Wheaton College um, I guess my expectations for Wheaton to be this like school that was like on fire was uh, kind of diminished but at the same time I saw that God works through the students that comes here, that you're not here because, you know, um, by accident or coincidence, you guys are here truly because God is sending you here. And um, a large part of that is the ministry that you're going to do around campus. So, um, yeah, that's my, that's my part. Thank you. That's awesome. So my second question is, you guys kind of already mentioned a bit of this, but how did you guys each get connected with your current ministry? And how did that process of getting involved, what did that look like? So I can remember back to when I visited Wheaton. Um, and for me, the visit um, was, you know, kind of like a normal college visit. You go, you get a tour um, and you get to talk with a student. Um, but at the same time, something felt like different. Um, and so as I was, um, as I committed to Wheaton, um, I got to know other people who knew a lot about Wheaton just because like their parents went here um, and they told me about the diaconoi program, um, and it's just a program that really does serve students as they're coming in. Um, and I saw how much that affected me and my decision, and so I wanted to join. Um, and it's a pretty small service group. Um, like most schools, you get paid to be a tour guide. At Wheaton, you don't. Um, you really have to just want to do it. So thankfully, like God placed that on me and like I really love giving tours I love getting to meet new students um and so yeah for me to be involved in this I just kind of like got to know uh people on campus there's an application process for um uh, that's open for all of the freshmen um so you can apply and yeah just join the diaconoid program I love it yeah um it's kind of cool, I think, how I got involved with some of the ministries um, opportunities that I'm involved with, because once I got involved with one, it was just like doors kept opening um, to get involved with other things. And so, but I think another part is that Abide Ministries is actually something that my friend and I saw as something that wasn't present on campus, 
um, kind of like what JY shared. And so we were able to just create that. And that I think is also a really cool thing because if there's something that you see needing to happen on campus or a ministry that you think um, is maybe not there in the capacity that you would like, there's also the ability for you to just kind of make it your own um, and like make that available to to other people and to the students of Wheaton. Yeah, I think um, for me, well, how I found Discipleship Ministries, um, it's just a pretty prominent group on campus. Ray Chang, um, who's kind of the head of Discipleship Ministries, um, is in chapel a lot. And so I just was made aware of that um, pretty much the way everyone is, which is a lot of people sign up for it. Um, and the Honduras Project was a little bit more covert because it's a pretty small group of people um, and it's completely student-led on campus. So I found out about HP um, actually through a friend who did it one year and she was like, you should do Honduras Project. And I was like, do you, do you go to Honduras? And she was like, well, yeah, but like, that's not like the, the biggest part about it. And I was like, what does that even mean? Um, and then I found out that the core values of HP were actually also doing manual labor service projects in the Wheaton area um, every weekend throughout the year and then going and completing a service project in Honduras. Um, and so something that really appealed to me about that was serving both the local Wheaton community and also our um, global community in Honduras with partners that we've had there for a long time. And so I just thought that that was a good way I could um, get in a good workout every Saturday um, and also just really invest well in both communities. Yeah, for me, the prayer meetings that um, I was involved with were specifically there's one called Kido Moim, which met every single week to pray for Wheaton's revival. Uh, that was something that was truly provided by God. But uh, it's the same thing with any ministry. You're not called to bear fruit, right? You're called to be faithful uh, in obedience. I think that's the number one thing that you have to remind yourself. Um, as for chaplain of prayer, I remember freshman year coming in and Jonathan Vines was a chaplain of prayer back then. He was a senior when I was, he was a junior when I was a freshman. And um, I think I met him a total of five times maybe. But then he was the upperclassman who truly learned how to walk in front of the Lord. And for me to actually talk with him and converse with him, he probably doesn't remember me. But for me, that was so crucial. So I advise you guys, if you come here and you see people uh, that are truly awakened and truly just loving the Lord, go talk with them, go talk with them, see what ministries that they're doing and ask him like how the Lord has been working through them on our campus as well. So, yeah. How were you challenged and how did you grow through your time in your ministry? Yeah, I can go first. Um, for me, it was hard. When, we, when, we, when you start a prayer meeting, sometimes it's just by yourself. Sometimes it's four people, but um to actually keep that place of prayer, to keep that flame alive, that's something that's very hard to do. And sooner or later, you realize that the weight of the cross is something that's actually really heavy. And the weight of the grace is actually heavy. But um, in realizing that when you're called to be a Christian, you're not guaranteed a comfortable, you're not guaranteed an easy way, right? The way we, that we walk is very narrow. So to actually walk that walk but in realizing that it's not me who does all the heavy lifting, for me, my calling is to actually obey and be in that place and to actually lift all my burdens to Christ and seeing how he just worked through me. I think that was something that I truly learned that it's, it's never meant to be easy. Being a Christian is never easy and doing ministry is never easy. But at the same time, when you actually hear the call to pray, if you hear the call to actually serve, and you go into that place of servitude. If you go into that place of self-sacrifice, then it's Christ that ultimately sustains you. And I think that's like the biggest challenge that I uh, had to learn. Yeah, I think um, one of the biggest ways that I was grown through challenge um, was in my time with ministry trips or student ministry partners. Um, I got to go to Costa Rica over the summer and that well, the semester prior, I took a class called evangelism at Wheaton, which was a really cool class. And for me, evangelism is like really outside of my comfort zone. So in and of itself, evangelism is kind of challenging and always a growing thing for me. But then when I got to go to Costa Rica, it was also a challenge and a growing experience because it was then sharing the gospel 
um, in a cross-cultural context um, in a language too that I was not super fluent in. And so, but it was really cool to see how the Lord really kind of um, transcended those, those lingual boundaries. Um, and so, yeah, there was a lot of growth that came out of that and just like the joy of really sharing what the gospel is and what the gospel means to me was really growing during that. Yeah, I think for um, kind of in that same line, I think for me, the biggest challenge that I faced in my ministry was um, just kind of being comfortable in front of people talking about my experiences like openly and honestly um, that I've had here at Wheaton. Um, like, thankfully, like most of which have been really, really amazing. Um, but um, for me, I'm, I'm like actually an introvert um, and when you're giving a tour to a family who like has just a bunch of questions and they want to know all about you i want to share that but um at the same time like i tend to keep to myself so i've definitely seen myself grow in that way um but also we the diaconoi program is not just about um hosting overnight or giving tours it's about building one another up in community so there's um actually 14 people on the team um who you get to know them super, super well. Um, you just spend a lot of time. I actually just came from dinner um, with the whole group. And I found that like living in community with people is hard. Um, we had a lot of different conflicts that happened throughout the year that were difficult for us to work through, but thankfully um, through like prayer and just spending time talking it out, we were able to work them out and we're such good friends now. Yeah, I think. For me, one of the challenges um, I'm facing in my ministry is current. Um, so with Honduras Project, I get to serve as a logistics coordinator this year, which means that I kind of detail a lot of what will happen on our actual visit to Honduras. Um, just some really brief background. When we do our work projects every Saturday, we pass that money that we receive along to our Honduran partners as we get it. So they really build the bulk of the water system in Honduras. Um, and this year, because of the COVID situation and a few just safety issues, we actually aren't sure if we're going to get to go to Honduras in May. Um, so it's very possible that we will not actually be there um, at the end of this year. And so that's just something that's been teaching me to hold plans really loosely uh, and trust that the Lord does the work plans um, that aren't his and being okay with that because whether or not we actually get to visit um, in May, the project will be completed um, independently of our visit to Honduras or not. Um, and that in and of itself is a huge blessing. And it's really humbled me to realize that um, we play such a small part in this and such a small part um, in how the Lord accomplishes his plan. Um, and so, yeah, just still in that process of recognizing that um, the Lord's will will be done um, and learning to be okay with that. Awesome. When you guys look back on your entire time at Wheaton so far, is there like a particular highlight or a favorite memory that you can think of from your involvement? It can be either current or past. I have one. Um, so my freshman year, alongside being on student government, I was also on gospel choir. Um, so we were able to sing at a lot of different churches in the Wheaton area, which was so amazing. Um, and just the music that we sang was such like it was just full of worship it was all about worshiping together in community um but we also got to go to hawaii so we spent uh it was like seven days in hawaii singing at different churches and schools um and that's actually when we got the news that we wouldn't be returning back to wheaton for um the remainder of the spring semester um due to covid so um while we were all on this trip together we just spent time just crying our eyes out because what are we going to do? We're not going back to where we consider like to be our home now. Um, but then that night we had the biggest concert of our entire week. Um, and like, thankfully we were able to tell the people at the concert, like, this is what happened. We're not going back to school after this. Um, but we still gave the concert. It was one of the best experiences of my life, but we were just like crying our eyes out while we were singing um, and still praising God for how great he is. Yeah, I think some some great memories um, have been from the leadership teams that I've been on. 
And so Abide, I have an amazing leadership team and we meet once a week and it's just like fun hanging out too, um, as well as planning things. Like on Saturday, we're gonna have a Christmas party just with our leadership team and it's just gonna be so fun. But um, one memory that I have specifically is my team that was um, planning trips for last summer, the ministry trips cabinet. We just randomly all came to my apartment and we played Settlers of Catan for hours. And I had never known how to play Settlers of Catan before. And it's not an easy game to just like pick up, but we just like laughed because I was really bad at it. And we just had so much fun. And so I think that's also just a testament to like how being involved in different things um, has like made me some of my best friends at Wheaton. So yeah. Yeah, I think one of them, my favorite memories from Wheaton um, was also with HP last year. So last year I was also involved with Honduras Project and because of the pandemic, once again, we did not get to go to Honduras, um, but we didn't find that out until relatively late in the year, maybe about February, March. So really quickly our team pivoted um, and just by like the Lord's grace and like a crazy um, sequence of events, we ended up picking up a brand new partnership with an organization called Chinley Planting Hope. Um, which is comprised of a group of Navajo women living on the Navajo reservation in Arizona. Um, and we decided that we were going to host a group of these women and some of their children at Wheaton College in May um, as a way to just kind of get to know them better um, and just establish a relationship with them and um, witness them, have them witness to us. And so it's kind of unlike anything we've ever done before. Um, and so we, instead of going and being hosted were the host and let me tell you it was so humbling I did not realize how much work hosts have to put into um, just what they do but it was like one of the craziest um, and busiest weeks of my life but also one of the best and most rewarding um, and we've actually kept up that partnership with that organization I think actually passed it off two ministry trips um, for this year so although we've pivoted back to Honduras um, just having the humbling experience kind of being on the other side of traditional missions uh, was probably one of the, the best experiences I've had here. Yeah, for me, it was definitely seeing God's faithfulness and seeing how our prayer meeting grew. So for about three years, I think it was about five, five of us that actually came and met and prayed every single week. And sometimes it was by myself, sometimes it was two people, but when COVID hit, it's amazing how God can just use unfortunate events for his favor because when COVID hit was when our prayer meetings started growing. Soon we used to meet in Gold Star. We couldn't meet in Gold Star because it started getting bigger. We had to meet in Williston, which is a dormitory here. We had to meet in there, the prayer chapel in there. And then, but uh, it still got bigger. Eventually we thought to ourselves like, you know, where can we move this meeting where it can actually just keep flourishing? And, you know, we looked for a location and Pierce Chapel, which is, um, one of the small, it's a small chapel. It's not our main chapel, but it's our smaller chapel that usually we have a fresh and worship in. And we heard it was a turn into a game room. So we're like, we thought to ourselves, we're like, okay, let's restore this place of worship. Let's restore this place of prayer. And we actually, when we moved there, um, five turned into 20, 20 turned into 30, 30 turned into 50. And we saw just God being faithful to our ministry and people, him sending just amazing people that were on fire for him to actually be on our knees to pray for this campus. And um, I was afraid that it was going to stop once the semester was over. But uh, when I came back this year, I learned that, you know, people's fire, the, the fire in the people's hearts were, were growing. In fact, and that when they came back, actually, they started making their own prayer meetings. So as of now, we used to have just, we, when I first came, I couldn't even find one. Now there's 23 prayer meetings that specifically pray for revival. And they're not just in the ministry section. These are all spread out. The football team, the conservatory, the English department, each and every single dormitory here, terrace apartments. So right now, you guys are going to come in at a time where it's really critical. It's going to be really, it's going to be a time where you can see the Lord work, I think. So, uh, yeah, that's definitely my favorite moment, just getting to see God just expanding and just God being triumphant. How have you each stayed connected to the organizations, churches, and communities you partnered with since your involvement? Yeah, so while I was in Costa Rica this summer, um, I got to work with 
an organization and we had our um, Tika Mama, she wanted us to call her, which is like a Costa Rican mom. Um, and so I have been able to just like stay in contact with her um, over what's, I don't know, what's that one app that like, I don't know, over some messaging app, I can't remember the name of it, but it's, that's been super cool. And so she checks in with me and I check in with her. Um, and then there was also a ministry or a, um, a missionary family from Texas who was down there and in Costa Rica while we were. And so we got really close with their four little kiddos. Um, yes, WhatsApp. Thank you, Kezia. I use WhatsApp. Um, and so, yeah, through WhatsApp, I got to, I am still connected with that family. Um, and the kiddos are so sweet and they like will send me little um, books that they write or poems about Jesus and stuff. And so um, that's, it's just been cool to stay connected to a ministry and an organization that is so far away through WhatsApp. <laughs> Um, I am definitely still in contact with the gospel choir. Um, I sadly wish I could be more active in the choir, um, but I am very busy at this point currently. But um, like I try to go to every single event that they have, um, not just because like I want to support my choir, um, but because they really do like take the time before the events to pray that there would be some sort of some person in the room who has not met God yet, who just kind of comes to Jesus because of the, the concert, because of the beautiful noise that we're making to God. Um, and it's not, it's like not a regular concert. It's a worship session together. Um, it's like everyone standing up on their feet, uh, moving back and forth, um, clapping. It's just, it's such an amazing opportunity to spend time worshiping together. And they just sound great too. Um, so that's how I've been staying in contact with the gospel choir i think um yeah i'm definitely still in contact with a lot of the um girls that i've had the privilege of meeting in small groups over the years um most of them are still right here on campus so i can just shoot them a text and i try to be intentional with having kind of like little reunions um just catching up just to see how everyone's doing um because you know we played um a really big part in each other's lives i think um for quite a long time over the years. Um, so that's a blessing to have them on campus since it is um, primarily an on-campus ministry. Um, and then with Honduras Project, um, since we also do a lot of um, service in the Weedon area, I've actually been able to keep up with some of our work project partners. Um, so people that ask us to do things for them basically on Saturdays. Um, and that's been a really big blessing actually. Um, one of my work project partners, um, I remember her just simply because she had called HP, um, and we don't typically do things like this, we usually do manual labor, but she had asked us um, to come to her house because her husband had actually passed away about two weeks before um, she called us, and she wanted us to come help take care of his things for her. Um, and so I went to her house that first day, um, and I was just overwhelmed by how kind and welcoming she was and just by how much she just wanted someone to talk to. Um, honestly, I felt like I didn't do a lot of work there, um, but I was just able to be there and listen to her um, and just hear from her experiences. Um, and that was like one of the coolest um, experiences I've really seen the Lord in through my time in HP. Um, and since then I've kept up with her. Um, just It was just her birthday last week. So just made her a little video for her birthday. Um, but yeah, she's just been a big blessing to me as well. Um, just being able to um, appreciate her vulnerability um, with me and with our team um, and other work project partners like that as well um, has been a big blessing. So in short, yeah, text, texting is your friend and phone calls um, in person unions and you can have them are amazing as well. Yeah, for me, I uh, don't need Kido Moim, which was the main prayer meeting that started all of this last year. Um, I think one of the main things that we say is, you know, if the Lord tells you to go, you go. If he tells you to stop, you stop. Um, right now, I'm working with the chaplain's office as a uh, student chaplain of prayer again, um, just being like an unofficial point person for all these prayer meetings together. Um, what's really been cool about this is that recently, local churches and other college campuses like Moody, Trinity, Calvin, um, either other non uh, 
even other secular colleges like UIUC or um, have been reaching out saying that I heard that you guys are praying for revival. We want to join in. We want to pray with you guys. Now, one thing that we always said that was if Wheaton is revived and Chicago is revived, Chicago is revived and the Midwest is revived and so forth. And just seeing how this is working is um, God does use ministries to come together for his greater kingdom. Uh, and in times he actually does unite division as well. Um, so that's how I've been, I've been connecting with um, other churches as well. Um, so yeah, I, I advise you guys like just meet other people in Moody as well. It's like a 40 minute, 50 minute train ride from here. There's people that are awesome over there as well. Um, so yeah, and local churches as well. There's um, yeah, there's a lot of great pastors out there. So what advice or encouragement would you give to students interested in becoming involved in service or ministry opportunities at week? Um, I would say this is going to be very hypocritical, but choose one each year. Um, if you think you can juggle two, then maybe two. Um, but um, for me, like I can speak about my freshman year, I was juggling like my classes coming in as a freshman. Um, I was on student government. I was on gospel choir. I was in a DSG or a discipleship small group. So I was not have giving myself the proper care and time I needed as like an introvert. Um, and so it really did affect the way that I was able to minister um, to the people around me. Um, so yeah, I would suggest choosing one or maybe two a year and focusing on that. And it's okay to not continue with something after um, after a year, if you decide it's not for me this year, that's okay. Um, and so, yeah, I think just being okay with saying no um, and knowing when you're done with something. I think the advice that I would share with you guys, just based on my experience, was I was a little bit timid to get involved into something right away. Um, but I would really encourage you guys that if there's something you're interested in and there's a ministry on campus or any kind of group on campus that you're interested in, just like go for it. Because the people here really are so inviting and welcoming and they are gonna just like totally envelop you into that group. Um, and like I said earlier, for me, once I got involved in one thing, I got to know more people. And so then I got to be involved in other things and doors just kept opening. Um, and Honestly, too, that was a way that I made a lot of the best friends that I have at Wheaton right now. Um, and so, and like as a transfer, I was on transfer orientation committee. And so the advice that I always give is just to like get involved in something because it just really does open so many doors. So, yeah. Yeah, I guess if I could give um, a piece of practical advice, it would be go to the club fair um, your first year here, literally pretty much every organization on campus is there. Um, you can really find a lot of great opportunities there. That's how I found DM, Snapchat Ministries. Um, and then my second piece of advice would be just to be open to something you maybe didn't envision yourself doing um, if you feel like the Lord is calling you to it. So for me, that was Hunter's project. I always knew I wanted to be a small group leader, but then when I heard about HP, I was like, I don't know if I want to give up all my Saturdays to like, go work in someone's yard for eight hours like that doesn't sound fun um but the lord really convicted me in that um he's like your saturdays belong to me um and i want you to use them in this way i had never thought i would do something like that um but because of um that call i felt he like humbled me enough um to make me willing to just try it um and i'm so grateful um that he put that on my heart so yeah i would just say branch yourself out um and if you don't like it um like elijah said you can always stop doing it um but most things are worth a try for me i would say the first piece is pray pray seriously pray about what ministry god is sending you to that's the most important part because if you actually kneel and you set yourself before god he will send you to the right places i think secondly be bold i remember when i was first leading a prayer meeting um, I started crying. Why? Because I didn't know how to lead this thing. I was so like, I was so frustrated. I started crying. People thought I, you know, it was the Holy Spirit, but no, I was just really frustrated. But I, but, but in, in keeping that place of prayer, uh, God truly did teach me. He did teach me through trials and errors. So be bold and don't be discouraged. 
Um, none of us are, none of us come in as pastors or perfect people, you know. So just come in and be bold. And um, third, I truly mean it when I say, be your, your job isn't to make food, right? That that depends on the Lord, but truly be faithful and be in obedience because. I remember when we prayed for revival and sometimes nothing would change and I would be so heartbroken. And I went to my mentor, Chaplain Waybright, and I said, Chappie G, we call him Chappie G. Chappie G, why is nothing changing? Why is everything so hard? This cross is so hard to bear. And um, he smiled at me. He said, JY, when's the last time being a Christian was easy? It's not meant to be easy, but it is worth it. Um, in mentioning this, I really want to say that when you do walk that road, truly just just lift, um, lay those burdens down before God. Uh, you're not called to carry all of it. You're called to just obey and be faithful. And it's hard to do that. But once you do do that, you see that soon you think that you're the one that's carrying the cross, but you start realizing that the cross is carrying you to completion. Um, so just bear that in mind. Uh, I think one analogy that he also gave me, you guys are going to experience this further on as juniors, maybe sophomores and seniors. Uh, when Martin Luther, at the end of his Reformation career, the greatest reformer of, you know, perhaps in history, he looked out his window and at the end of his life, he saw that not a lot had changed. He almost lost his faith. But at the same time, he was reminded that it wasn't him who was supposed to bring the change, it's God. Yeah. And all he was called to be was faithful and to obey. So, yeah. So my final question that was prepared was how have you each navigated your involvement alongside other time commitments as a Wheaton student? I think I'm still finding that balance. Um, so right now I'm involved in only two things, which is like a first for me, um, but I'm working, um, I'm working an on-campus job and I'm also a part of the diaconoid program. Um, so this semester, it's been working out pretty well for me, just having those two things alongside my classes. Um, but I think it really is sectioning off your time, uh, especially with student leadership. If you join student leadership, you kind of need to set boundaries on when you will work on your um, school work and when you will work on your student leadership work, um, because it can be easy to just kind of let that run into your everyday conversations and like everything you do. Um, but really setting up those boundaries saying, I'm not talking about this right now because I have to study for my exam tomorrow. Um, things like that are really important for managing time. Um, I would say have spiritual discernment. It's obvious, but I remember, I mean, one for one thing, I say, if you're going to do a ministry, give it your all, you know, you're not just doing it because it's a ministry. You're not doing it for your resume. You actually have to believe in the cause, right? Believe in the vision that you set for it. But once you go all in on this, it's easy to make a dichotomy of that and your schoolwork. But at the same time, you need to realize that you're a student and God is working through you as a student in that ministry. So those two things aren't separate things. They go together. So see how your class actually helps you help shape your ministry and how your ministry shapes your class because those things go hand in hand. Um, don't try to separate the two, uh, but at the same time, have spiritual discernment and knowing that what commitments you make, um, they will demand your time. If you're going to give it your all, I think someone said, just choose one or two. I fully stand behind that. I think last year I made the mistake of trying to be, um, I got over ambitious. I, I was trying to be student chaplain of prayer but I was also trying to be class, uh, senior class president. And at the end of the day, I prayed, Lord, if this is not what you wanted, like make me drop one. And that's what he did. Uh, thank the Lord. But uh, man, have spiritual discernment in where you're needed. And if you actually, if the Lord sends you somewhere, give it your all. But don't separate that from your classes. See how they actually influence one another and build on one another. Yeah, I would say um, just a piece of advice from me would just be, don't be afraid to ask people around you for help, um, especially on your ministry teams. I think most ministry opportunities here um, come with teams. So like both of my cabinets um, are made up of like eight to 10 students um, that I can reach out to for help with something. I remember um, 
early on, I didn't really want to do that because I didn't want people to know um, that I was struggling. I wanted to think that I just had, you know, everything all together. Um, but people will end up knowing that you're struggling when you start to not do things well. Um, and the Lord didn't design us um, to just not be in community. Um, and part of being in community is being humble enough to reach out to other people for help. Um, so that's something that um, I would definitely advise y'all to do. I'm definitely doing that right now um, in the midst of everything. And people ask me for help too. Um, it just makes me feel um, good serving them and then knowing that they have my back when they need it too. Yeah, I feel like you guys really covered it. I don't really have that much to add, but for me, it's been really helpful to really evaluate and prayerfully evaluate where my um, core values lie and what my priorities really are um, just in time management and things like that. Awesome. Thank you all so much for sharing. And it looks like we have about 15 minutes left for Q&A. Um, and I did receive a few direct um, messages with questions. So thank you all for that. Um, if others questions still um, are in your mind, please feel free to jot them in the chat. Um, and we will not be able to get to all of the questions we received tonight. Um, but I'll try to go over ones that probably um, panelists can share about more broadly. Um, so first of all, um, what I've had a few questions about what chapel is like um, at Wheaton. Um, and there are some students who are interested specifically in becoming a student chaplain. So maybe JY could touch on that specifically, but um, all of you are able to um, give it a go. Oh, uh, for sure. For chapel, um, I think chapel is basically, I truly do want to believe that chapel is like the spiritual heartbeat of the campus. Because when I saw that when chapel wasn't there last year, how uh, the dry the campus became. And thankfully the Lord used that to make the prayer meetings happen. But at the same time, I think um, the students' voices really do matter when it comes to chapel. Chaplain Waybright, our chaplain right now, he actually does listen to the people, um, the struggles of the people, the needs of the people. Basically, we talked about spiritual warfare uh, in our last chapel and um, sexuality in our other ones. So to see what spiritual needs uh, we need to address in chapel. That's something that actually the chaplain's office does work really hard uh, to bring. Also, um, student chaplains are chaplains that help, the, uh, like student chaplains are students that are just having this title that can help the chaplain, if, uh, the main chaplain, but at the same time, you're given so much room to actually do your own ministry. There's not like very set guidelines, but it is what you make it to be. If you really do decide to pour out upon it, that you have the resources, you have the backing for you to actually just do so much. But at the same time, if you just, uh, if you're busy in other areas, um, you don't have to do, there's people that don't do as much as well. Um, so yeah. All right, thank you. And um, we have a few questions about what it's like to create a new ministry um, and how soon you can do that um, once you enter Wheaton. So. Um, do any of you have anything to share in that regard? Yeah, I would love to speak to this one just because that was something that I did. Um, and honestly, it's really easy to do. Um, you can do it kind of informally and not through Wheaton. Um, and that's kind of what JY did with his um, prayer meetings. And then I also did it more formally through um, different offices that Wheaton had. And so we're like a chartered club at Wheaton as well as a ministry. And so it's really easy and you can honestly do it whenever you want to. Really the requirements are that you make um, a constitution that kind of outlines what your ministry is about. And then you just need to um, have a faculty advisor. And um, I think you need five five students to sign on saying that they would be interested in being a part of this ministry. So it's really easy um, and yeah, would really encourage you guys to do that when you get here. Um, if I could add on to that, we also had our constitution, although 
for us, it was a, we didn't want to institutionalize a movement, right? A prayer meeting is a movement in some sorts. And I think the, the most important thing that you can have for your ministry is realizing what your vision is. Why do you see that ministry being needed at Wheaton? For us, we saw the lack of prayer and we called out people to pray. So I would suggest you truly pray about what your vision is. Um, and also just check if your heart is truly burdened for what you're trying to start, you know? Because a ministry is something that's, it requires a lot of commitment. It requires sometimes almost every, every part of you you might have to squeeze out every inch of, um, every ounce of strength that you have. So try to see what kind of burden that God puts in your own heart specifically and have a strong and clear vision for this because that vision is also something that other people, um, that they can rally behind as well. So, yeah. So here is a question um, that mentioned kind of following up on what Lindsay shared about Honduras Project. Um, but this person is curious about ministries helping outside of Wheaton's campus, um, getting involved probably um, not just domestically, but also internationally. So um, do the four of you have anything to share about that? Yeah, um, I would say in general, um, Wheaton does have a pretty decent kind of like globally focused uh, missions culture. Um, yeah, there's a big emphasis on missions here, definitely, and a lot of that comes with international missions. I know with Honduras Project, um, we were actually founded, I think, 43 years ago now um, through a partnership um, with a family in Honduras, um, and we've maintained that same partnership with that same family in Honduras um, throughout this entire 43 years. Um, and so that's kind of how I think quite a few um, of these international ministries that we even operate, it's through partnerships with locals um, in the areas. So we in, um, because it's a fairly well-known Christian school and kind of has a lot of ministries go out um, and graduate every year, has quite a few, um, quite a big network internationally of missionaries that they can get you connected with. And that's how a lot of these groups come up. So that was the case for Honduras Project um, and our kind of international involvement there. Um, and then I think, well, Chinle Planting Hope is local um, or domestic at least there in Arizona, but that was our case as well. We reached out to an alumna there that was working in that ministry and formed that partnership. So um, they're definitely like, kind of like Sophie was, um, alluding to like meaningful relationships that we have with these communities. It's not really kind of like the one and done, hop in, hop out, um, and then you never see these people again. You, you really want to maintain these relationships. And that's something that I like about that international um, kind of global missions aspect of eating a lot. I'd love to add something to this question really too, really quickly. Um, if you're interested in international kind of missions and traveling, we also have the hunger program, which is the human needs and global resources. And I was not able to do that, um, but I have a few friends who are global right now, um, or actually they just came back, but that is also a really great program if you're interested um, in international, just like trips. And that's, if you wanna look that up, it's like, H-N-G-R is, but we just call it hunger. Yep, I just put in the chat the link to our hunger webpage. So if you want to check that out too, um, go ahead and do that. And um, next question, I think all four of you could um, answer this. What is one thing you wish you would never change about Wheaton? And what is one thing you wish you could change about Wheaton? I, um, so for one thing that I would never ever change about Wheaton, I love the, like the heart that the faculty members have. Um, so all of your professors um, and even just the people working in the, the um, different departments, they love so their students so much. Um, and I actually like, I see their jobs as ministry too. Um, like my professors, most of the time I can like walk into class the first day, they'll ask me my name. Um, and then from then on out, they won't forget it. Um, and that to me is just, that's a big deal. Um, just knowing who I am, um, with among all the other people who, um, go to the school and then inviting us over to their houses and, um, letting us have dinner with their families or just, um, eating desserts in their backyard. It really is 
an amazing opportunity to get to know your professors and for them to get to know you too. Um, but one thing that I would change about Wheaton, um, I think that um, some of our students um, just kind of have a mindset that there is forgiveness. There's like forgiveness of sins, um, but there's no forgiveness of kind of like mistakes or especially when it comes to academics um, like if you miss one assignment then your entire academic career is over or if you don't if you get below like a 75 on an assignment then your professors won't like you anymore um, I've seen that in a couple of my friends and I just think like we need to give ourselves grace and give ourselves the forgiveness that God shows us as well so that's one thing that I've currently been trying to um work into my friends. Um, but yeah, that's one thing that I would change. Um, one thing that I would never change about Wheaton is the way that everything is kind of integrated, um, how all of my classes have that faith aspect. And so it's really, really easy um, and honestly a blessing to see how God's hand is in creation and goodness is in every one of the subjects that I am talking about. Um, and then I'm a sociology major. I don't know if I forgot to mention that at the beginning, but because of that, I feel like I have a really big like heart for social justice. And I think that is one thing I'd like to see more of at Wheaton, um, kind of doing more social justice stuff with the students, but also just like um, nationally and globally. I think that's one of the hardest questions that I had to think of, but uh, I think for me specifically, um, as my brother said, professors here are amazing. Uh, it's not just like, I came from a, a private, it was supposed to be Christian, but it wasn't really Christian. The school that tried to saturate everything, kind of like only limit your worldview to this one certain conservative uh, worldview. But, but uh, Wheaton does provide you and equip you with, uh, with an education that is so diverse. It's not just a, it's not seeped in bias. It actually does have conversations with uh, different fields. So just the professors and the academic aspect of Wheaton is something that is amazing. That just blew my mind when I first came because before I came here, I didn't know Christian education was a possibility. I thought it was all flawed, but uh, it does have its flaws like everything else, but I truly believe that God is working through this place. Um, one thing I would change about Wheaton is there's a lot of academic perfection I think this is also something else my uh, brother mentioned as well. Um, and once you have this culture of uh, culture of kind of perfection, and culture of Christian perspective, if it comes into like the spiritual sense, what you find is that people tend to burn out really fast, right? People tend to burn out maybe because of their ministries or maybe because of academics, because people are so overachieving, they tend to burn out really fast. Uh, I think this is something that we need to see change. I think um, it can change simply. Uh, so yeah, that's something that I would yeah, change about Wheaton. Yeah, really quick. I know that we're almost out of time, um, but something I would never change about Wheaton um, would definitely just be the people that I've met here and the community that I have here. Um, I have met the greatest people here at Wheaton. Um, it's actually like pretty amazing just typically the quality and caliber of students that Wheaton attracts. Um, my experience has mostly been that these students are serious about their faith um, and want to invest more in a personal relationship with Christ and kind of walk alongside you as you do that as well. Um, you meet people from all over the world. Um, right now I have roommates from um, Budapest, Iowa and South Korea. So there you go. Um, they're some of my closest friends. But yeah, just being able to make those connections and forming relationships that I'm confident will last after college as well has been one of the most meaningful things to me about the school. And then something I would change about Wheaton, um, that's a tough question. I think that I would really um, like to see even maybe a more service oriented culture at Wheaton. I think at Wheaton and also just college in general, it's really tempting um, to just kind of make your schedule all about yourself all the time. Cause that's kind of what college is, you making all your own decisions for really the first time. Um, but just being able to recognize our identity as Christians first um, and using that to serve others more so um, and myself included in this is something that I'd love to see us just take a little bit more, a little bit more action. 
Awesome. Well, we are almost out of time, but thank you all so much for participating tonight. Um, all of you students and parents tuning in. Um, if you do have questions though, feel free to drop them in the chat still. I know we didn't get to a handful of those that did come in, um, but we will do our best to follow up after um, tonight through email. We do have your contact info, so we'll make sure to do that. Um, otherwise, feel free to email us directly, admissions at wheaton.edu. Um, and we will be able to follow up there. And um, thank you again just for exploring Wheaton. I know um, a lot of you are coming from different places. Some of you are just starting to look into Wheaton. Others of you have already been admitted and might already be committed to coming. So we're really excited um, wherever you are in your college journey. But thank you again and take care and have a wonderful um, Christmas season. Thank you.